Does it automatically record when you log in or something, Scott? Uh, this meeting actually does. So uh, thanks for saying that. That's probably the first uh, thing that needs to be said is that uh, you're all being recorded. So please, you know, yeah. uh, keep that in mind. Act as if that's the case. <clears throat> right. And the recordings are made public, importantly. Yes, widely learned it is. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. I wasn't actually sure if I should uh, log in as the Flux user again this time, but I figured uh, let's do it again. Why not? Um, it's good practice. Yeah. We should we get to... people a moment or so to join before we get. Yeah, yep, yeah. and that gives me a moment to go and find the uh, the right document. Oh, uh, here it is for everyone. Are you good? Are you um, hosting this, Michael? Or, As or in, am I going to be the MC? Would you like to? Uh, I'm happy to. Either way, however. Cool. Yeah. Please be my be my guest or rather my host. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, let's just wait a moment for folks to come in. So, you know, I can actually probably start since we're just talking about housekeeping stuff. Um, I was going to suggest how do you all feel about? This this uh, meeting notes. How do you feel about this meeting notes template? Uh, I think there's sorry. There's kind of a loud uh, scraping going on. Maybe there, there, thank you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, how do you all feel about this meeting notes? I'm going to point to even though this is not the GitOps working group meeting, I'm going to point to the GitOps working group meeting notes. How would you feel about this notes template, adopting this notes template for the Flux uh, user meeting notes? It's, and uh, it's really just the first page. There's a template there. The reason that I'm asking is there's a couple of things that are nice about this. This is part of what some other CNCF projects use and non-CNCF projects use something similar to this where there's uh, always an assignment for the current meeting someone who's a moderator, someone who takes notes, even though notes are everyone's responsibility, maybe for this, we don't do that, but it's nice to have someone who's, who's really dedicated to helping with it. Um, and then at the very end, there's, uh, you know, um, who wants to be the moderator and take whatever other roles for the next meeting. Um, and then there's also a topic section, or I guess we have, uh, what is it, agenda? Either way, that just allows people in between meetings to um, basically anyone to copy this if they need to and people to add topics in between meetings. Does anyone have an objection to that or feelings about that? Sounds good to me. Um, I'm, I've seen this format in uh, SMI use, for example, in other projects. So yeah, it's great. Okay. All right, cool. I'll pop it in uh, later. I won't waste this meeting's time with it. Well, I'll do it sometime during the meeting so we can see if someone wants to take the moderator role for next time. But for those who came in after I posted the link, here's the meeting notes for this actual meeting. I guess we can go ahead and get started now. Um, We wanted uh, introductions. Uh, I'll go ahead and start just because I was already talking, speaking. Um, I'm Scott Rigby. I'm on the WeaveWorks team with, with uh, Michael, Stefan, Hida, Bianca, and others. Uh, sorry, and Kingdon and others. Um, and uh, I'm on the DX team. So nice to meet you if I haven't before. 
feel free to jump right in whoever wants to. I'll go next since I'm pretty new uh, here. Um, yeah. I'm Kingdon, um, joining Weaveworks and a uh, new open source support engineer. So um, I'll be spending lots of time on Flux. Cool. Uh, I'll, I'll go next. Um, I'm Bianca. I'm also on the Weaveworks team and I'm a designer. Uh, I'm Michael. I work for Guess Who Weaveworks. Uh, um, I can't remember my job title. Engineer. Principal yeah. something. Principled engineer. Little do they know. Uh, my name is Thoros. Uh, I work for a company called Senet in uh, Sweden, uh, and I'm also uh, one of the maintainers uh, for Flux. I, I mostly work with Terraform provider and stuff like that. Uh, hi, I'm Marky Mice. I uh, surprise work at Weaveworks uh, engineer as well, but I'm on the, the commercial side of building, uh, building our Weave Kubernetes platform. Yeah, I'm David Tessar. I am a, a software development engineering manager at Microsoft um, in the commercial software engineering uh, department focused on GitOps. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Innes, and I'm an engineer also at Microsoft uh, supporting GitOps on uh, AKS and also Arc. And Hida is Hida. <laughs> He's also principled, I think. <laughs> I'm Hida. Um, I'm a software engineer at Reverks, and I work on uh, the Flux projects. There we go. Uh, so David and Jonathan, you both work at Microsoft, but not in the same group. Is that is that correct? If I got that right? Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, we we know each other and we are working together, but we are totally separate departments. Got it. Cool. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the zero seven release and do a small recap of what we? achieved um, in the last month. I, I suggest we bang that on the end of the agenda and make sure we get through. Yeah, because it's it might be a bit open ended. So let's make sure we get through other stuff first, if that's okay. Sure. Cool. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Kingdon, for jumping in above you on the agenda, but I have a hard stop at half past. Um, so I was hoping we could just verbally confirm. It seems that everybody likes the, the flag E flagger logo that I've drawn from Michael's drawing. Um, so if everything, if everyone's, maybe I should post a link to it. If everyone's happy with that, then I will create a logo pack for it and um, make transparent versions and we can move forward. Is that cool? Thank you, Bianca, so much for, uh, for all the effort. And yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Michael, for coming up with the idea. It's like, I really like yeah. what uh, what uh, the the final version is like. Really, really great. I love it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I like where we're at. Yeah, I'm going to reach to you afterwards around the um, formats and stuff like that. Please. We also need to update the CNCF landscape. Uh, yeah, there are plenty of things uh, of diagrams and all all stuff. With, uh, I have to replace Flagger logo everywhere. So I'm going to need different things. Perfect. So I, I'll just wait for your specific instructions and I'll give you that those things. And then um, if anything, I feel is missing for general use, I'll add it. Thank you very much. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you. Bianca, which is the most recent one? I yes, I saw your, uh, your link. Um, I just, oh, is that, does that not link to the, that should link 
Huh. Thanks to one comment uh, from Dan. Uh, it should be linking to a comment from Michael uh, from nine Michael. days ago. Uh, um, is it wrong? I can do it here. Let me. Uh -huh. here. here, here's the correct link. Or Stefan beat me. Damn. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, wait. But oh, the one from flags. three days ago. Three days ago, yeah. Two flags um, that are like both half um, half textured, like kind of a racing motif, which is fun with his colors and Michael's motifs. It was all like a big teamwork thing. <laughs> so cool. So cool. I pasted the link in the chat or in the meeting notes. Oh, great. Thank you. So cool. Oh, that's, that's, it for, that's it for me then. I'll just wait for Stefan's uh, sizes and formats. OK. And I, I guess, Stefan, you know, obviously, where all the places it should go. I know CNCF has an artwork section and everything. Um, yeah. Um... I'm well aware of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. Oh, Bianca, awesome. Okay, cool. Well, then should we skip? Sh should we then, um, unless there was anything else for that, should we go up to reviewing the action items from the last meeting? I'm looking now. I don't actually see any action items. Yeah, it normally involves looking through the notes and grepping manually, or eyeballing it uh, to see if there's any actions mentioned. I'm not sure there were any that weren't just carryovers. Yeah, yeah, there was one around the flagger Slack channel. We have one in CNCF now. We updated the the WeWorks one and tell people to move. There are 700 people which didn't move, only nine moved. So I'm guessing we have to post each year. week. Hey, please move, please move. We'll, we are going to archive this in a month or something. So. Cool. That needs forwarding pointers, doesn't it? It's like. If you move a channel, then you leave a forwarding pointer. And so anyone that goes to it just gets bounced to the correct place. Yeah, definitely. There's Maybe there's a bot that does that or something, but uh, yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to put something on the, on the agenda, but um, for some reason, isn't able to edit the document, um, then just bring it up in the chat or, or speak up and I can put it in there. Okay, great. Um, well then the next one on the list was, the, I, I had noted it before, but I'll just mention it again briefly because a few other people joined afterwards. Um, um, oh, also, oh, thanks, thanks Lee for adding notes. Uh, there is a, uh, I, I think maybe it was just Leon Santoshi, but just if you don't mind just taking a quick peek at the, I'm gonna post the link again, cause I know Zoom resets the history each time when someone joins, but um, this is from the GitOps working group. Anybody have an, an opposition to the, the, the template um, at the top? Not that, uh, not this outline thing, which I think we should probably remove. <laughs> we should probably remove, but, but this template, which is just basically the main point is um, that anyone can post it in between meetings. Um, you, if the meeting host doesn't do it at the end of the meeting um, and that there can be assignments for the next meeting for whoever's gonna do different roles. Um, that way people can volunteer. Um, any opposition to that? So far everyone seems cool with it, but do you have any suggestions or opposition to that? That seems reasonable. Yeah. yeah, no oppositions. Okay, cool. Okay, so I think we can move on to the next one. I'll I'll go ahead and 
add at least that bit to the end of this one and then I'll make the template um, for the next meeting um, while people are talking. Uh, okay, so next agenda item. Uh, do you wanna move on to Kingdons? Sure. Um, so uh, as part of my role, uh, I've been tasked with helping to support the transition from Flux V1 to Flux V2. And that includes um, closing out pull requests from Flux V1. Uh, so I've done a comprehensive review of all of the open pull requests. Um, and I had hoped to have some statistics to share, but at this point, I have not figured out how to manipulate the pivot table correctly. Uh, so um, I can tell everyone that the top contributor is SquareMo. Thank you, Michael, for being such a top contributor. Um, and uh, from my assessment, there are not any um, high priority pull requests to merge, um, but there are several um, non-breaking changes that I've been working with the maintainers to understand the disposition around um, merging changes and whether it would be okay to merge some things that add uh, accessibility to feature flags that already exist uh, or adding new feature flags. Um, and I think I have a, a fair understanding of what will merge and won't merge at this point. Um, so in the interest of keeping the number of releases low um, so that there is not a misconception that development will continue on Flux V1, um, I'm at this point, I'm thinking one more chart release would be a good idea uh, if, if we want to include some of the new chart flags. Um, the reviews are not complete or, or um, I haven't fully communicated with everyone to see who really wants their change to still merge, uh, but I've started those communications. And if you have a pull request that's open, um, please chat with me and, and we'll figure out whether your needs are met well by Flux V2 or whether there is something that we could still merge to make your life easier in the meantime while you're on Flux V1. Um, and that's, that's really everything for me. Um, if anyone has questions, I'm open to answer questions uh, or talk after the meeting on Slack or hey, otherwise. Kingdon, do, do you feel you've got enough um, sort of help getting the message out about how Flux V1 is going to be run for the next while? Um, do we need yeah. to kind of make official, any official posts or something? I think that people have largely gotten the message that the maintenance in Flux V1 is, is minimal and the focus is on development of Flux V2. Uh, I've seen a lot of people saying that they have been able to move to Flux V2 or they do plan to move to Flux V2. Um, and I have been making an effort to um, make sure and ask if, if there is a need for something that Flux V2 is not addressing. Uh, I think so far the biggest one I've, I've seen is the um, post-processing in flux.yaml. Um, and I think that we have uh, some plans uh, that we can discuss further, maybe at the next meeting or before then. Um, I spoke with Stefan yesterday and then he said, uh, you guys have some plans for me. So. Yeah, there's a specific idea to help people out with uh, migrating from flux.yaml. Um, I'll, I'll find, I wrote it up in an issue, so I'll, I'll find that and we can talk about it uh, in another meeting or on Slack or whatever. Great. That's it for me. Should we move on to the next topic? Thanks, Kendon. Great. I think it's, uh, I'm not sure who added it, but it's, uh, it looks like it's an, be an announcement, or is this was this for Muley? The sneak peek uh, link. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't add it, but uh, that is coming up. Yeah, maybe Daniel threw that in there or something. Uh, yeah, on the eighth, we're going to be doing community call. Uh, it's the more intermediate level of content, and we're going to be covering the image update features um, with some demos. 
So primarily based off of the guide that we have existing, uh, but maybe with a little bit of ad libbing and speculation on how to use it with uh, generated manifests and things like that. So uh, you know, tell your friends, uh, share it. And uh, just a heads up that hopefully we'll get some users so that we get more, more issues. Yes, very welcome. I think it's uh, Stacy that's very diligent about putting links to the talks in the, in the agenda for us to mention. Yeah, she keeps keeps on top of things. You know? Yeah. Stefan, I think you have uh, the next point about the just discussing the 07 release. Still there, Stefan? Stefan may, may have stepped away yeah. from. I am. Oh, there you go. Ah, yeah, maybe it's just mute. Sorry. So, what do we want to talk about? Changes in uh, 07 or uh, Flav Z1 deprecation? Let's talk about 07 first. Okay, so. <clears throat> It took a while to get from 06 to 07. We bundled um, a bunch of API changes and some breaking changes and uh, testing all of that took a long time. Um, um, the single breaking change that we currently have in, uh, in Flux Bootstrap is the fact that we've switched from using a single uh, service account and a single uh, cluster all binding for the whole uh, for all the controllers to uh, to dedicate its service accounts and this has a direct impact if you have for example um, used something like soaps with aws kms or with um, gcp kms or if you did any kind of role binding uh, for a controller and you had to do that role binding on a default service account in the Flux system namespace. Uh, after you upgrade, you'll see that uh, the binding will not work. Not that we removed it, but because the controllers are no longer running under the default service account, uh, that binding will no longer apply to them. So for those that are using SOPs, uh, they need to change the binding to the customized controller service account. Uh, those have, that have bindings for let's say, know, source controller notification or other things. Each controller has a service account with uh, that exact name. So if it's source controller, there's a source controller service account in the Flux system namespace. Um, another change is the fact that only the controllers that are doing cluster reconciliation, like customized controller and hand controller, only those have a full access to your cluster resources. All the others have only access to their um, API, to their custom uh, resource, and that's it. So source controller cannot create deployments or delete deployments or nothing like that. It can only act on um, Git repositories and repositories and so on. That's for, for the bootstrap thing. We also uh, shipped uh, many improvements to the image automation uh, uh, feature. We now support um, uh, non semver tags. For example, you could use uh, tags with uh, build IDs, with timestamps, and uh, you can also filter tags uh, using uh, regex expressions. And that um, brings us very close to uh, Flux D1 uh, future priority in terms of image updates. We are uh, now at the point of writing a migration documentation from how you use Flux One to uh, to patch the image tags to how you can do it. You can do the same uh, things uh, with Flux Two. We'll you'll not only have to change how you orchestrate things. So now you'll have to define an image policy, an image repository, uh, image repository, and so on. But you also have to change your 
tag formats. If you used branch minus SHA, now you have to use branch minus SHA minus build ID or minus timestamp. Uh, so we can uh, detect the latest, um, the latest uh, push uh, based on the timestamp inside the tag. We no longer look inside the image. What that means, we no longer download uh, image layers, so you'll not be rate limited by Docker Hub or any other uh, container registry that you may use. Those are the, the, the big changes. Um, we'll have a blog post uh, coming next uh, with details uh, for the whole uh, change log. So that's it for, for the release. particularly excited about that more granular hardback. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Oh, and those that are bootstrapping Flux with Terraform, uh, we haven't yet figured out how to do the upgrade uh, for service accounts. Um, Terraform is not meant for Kubernetes. It's more like a hack. <laughs> so it, it's very hard to control the order of that are happening on the cluster, but uh, Philip is working on a, on a solution for that. So please wait longer if you are using the telephone provider. We don't have 06 ready for you. Yeah, I, I'm going to try to verify things today. It's, uh, let's see. I, I think things aren't actually, aren't really behaving the thing the, the way I expect them to. So. And it's mostly because we're using the QCTL provider and I don't really know how they do sometimes. Um, but yeah, it, it would be nice if we could eventually get like a proper Kubernetes provider so the, the alpha provider could become generally available, but that's really good, I guess. So yeah. Actually, so um, oh, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Michael, actually. I was going to take us on to the next agenda. So um, if Same. you want to talk about the current one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, sort of brings us uh, something Stefan mentioned just now um, about the roadmap um, or that referred to the roadmap brings us to talking about the timetable for deprecating Flux V1 since we're pretty close to reaching parity. Um, so if I remember correctly, there's basically two things left on the roadmap uh, that are holding us back. Uh, one is having a, a guide, um, the one that Stefan mentioned for migrating image automation from V1 to V2, um, which is quite a big change, but it can be fairly mechanical. Um, and the other is being able to use uh, image scanning from platforms that have their own registry with kind of integrated authentication. So uh, i.e. using ECR, um, ACR for Azure, I think it is, and GCR for Google. Um, they can't really work the same way as they do with Flux V1. So um, for those, I think we've now written guides for all of them. Stefan, do you know? So we have guides for ECR and GCR, how we how Go you ahead. can create a cron job to refresh the um, um, pool secret. And yeah, we don't have Azure accounts, so um, yeah, we are trying to find someone to, to write the Azure guide. Um, I'm um, currently working on the Azure solution um, for that in particular. Cool. Thank you. Can it be you. built based on a default identity or how are you going to build that solution? What, what's the question, Philip? Are, when you, when you're the, the actual solution, is it going to be based around like static keys, or is it going to be based around like a pod identity? Um, I think that posting both uh, would be 
fine. I mean, really, we just need to show that you can use generic mechanisms. Uh, like either of those tools would would work for, you know, an Azure environment. Uh, I'm looking at both of the doc pages for that right now. So the the problem with having environment variables means that you have to place those in your Git repo, and we don't have any kind of support for encrypting parts of the deployment spec. So that's a no go for me. The way that the ECR and GCR ones work, I think, is to use the kind of ambient authentication. So. Um, for instance, in AWS, you give your cron job the I am role that means that it can go and get the secret. So if there's an equivalent, whatever the equivalent is for Azure, that would be the way to go. Yeah, so th th that's kind of the bigger problem is that AWS and, and Google went the route of doing service account validation, while Azure built this project called AD Pod Entity, which is this like magic thing that you're running a cluster and then you have, you create Azure identities and Azure identity bindings, and it kind of just routes traffic. And I'm not really sure if, if you can extract a, a token. It, I, I'm not, I'm like, I have, we have to like look into that um, and, and see if we can actually get a token yeah, that's valid for logging. It down. seems like if you have the Azure CLI, um, you're able to um, either use an AD token. Um, or, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we need to see how this translates to an image pull secret, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Would, I, it's going to be in there um, since you can pull from Docker. So just need to find the intermediate step. I think one, one important thing to mention here is that whatever we tell people to configure, that should be compatible with GitOps. So whatever you are running, in the end, it should be a YAML that you have to commit to your Git repo. And that's how you store the, I don't know, cron job or whatever it is. So if that particular Kubernetes object is not a Kubernetes secret, but it contains a secret token, that's a no-go uh, in my opinion, because then we're telling people, hey, put put your secrets in plain text in Git and we want to avoid that at all costs. I don't think that, yeah, that would ever be a suggestion, but yeah, if you're, if you're running a cron job, you know, you can always just reference a secret. Yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah. If, if you need, yeah, a service account JSON or, you know, some special token, you know, say, hey, manage your secret, um, ideally in a GitOps friendly way, we can link to a doc for that and then just say, put this cron job into your repo and you know, hydrate your image pull secret every two hours. So. Cool, great. The, the one tricky thing that I'm not seeing here um, in we, I'm probably gonna add a note about uh, rebooting clusters uh, because with these cron jobs, there will be a period of time where they cannot pull images uh, until they run if the cluster has been offline for a little bit. So uh, I'm a, I'll yeah, make sure. That'll that. be true of all of them, won't it? Yeah, because Kubernetes doesn't have an init system where it's like, okay, the cluster just started up. Let's make sure we run all the jobs, so. Yeah. Right. I actually have a question about parity that relates to, to, um, to Git now. You know, we had an inter, uh, sorry, a, a meeting that was not a public meeting just be, uh, where I brought that I just happened to bring this up. But now I'm now I'm thinking, uh, I wonder if this means that we don't have parity with v1 in this way. There's a feature that was implemented for for v1. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, basically, it's the it's the it's the h it's the um, just the ability for anyone to use uh, GitHub with um, either personal access token or or um, SSH keys, yes, or deploy keys. You know that are more narrowly scoped. That's kind of best practice for a lot of orgs. So we could do this 
docs better, um, but you're able to use the personal access token as a basic auth. Does that answer your question more or less? No, I think Scott is confused. Maybe I am confused. We, yeah. we have full support for all types of authentication, but without the proxy. So there are, we'll get there. Let's without the proxy. Okay. Let's continue with the image updates. Okay. Oh yes, absolutely. I just wanted to know if I should put that as an agenda point for the parity discussion. Why a wider? Oh parity. yeah, no, it's um, it's in a couple of bullet points. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Please yeah. continue. That's cool. Um, so that is one item in the roadmap. Oh, I see. Uh, sort of checked off, um, or you know, soon to be checked off. Um, another, uh, actually, those were the two. So that was um how to use uh, image pool secrets from where the authentication is from the platform. And the other one was the migration guide, which is being written. Other stuff that has come up that it hasn't it's sort of maybe not big enough to be on the roadmap, um, but still ought to be done um, or at least talked about, uh, I've put in as bullet points. So one is that, um, one thing you can do with Flux B1 automation is um, almost, you can, you can tell it to use Semver or you can tell it to filter images by a glob pattern or a, a regular expression pattern. And when you do either of those latter two, it chooses the latest image based on which one has the most recent build time. But to do that it has to go and fetch the config file for every single image. Um, which is super expensive. And now that Docker Hub is aggressively rate limiting requests, um, probably prohibitively expensive. So um, we've sort of got a, a provisional decision I've put in a, a discussion um, for dropping that in favor of only ever using the tags. Uh, to order images, which in general will mean that people that are using Flux V1 with globbing or um, regular expressions will have to alter the way they tag their images so that they can order them by something, um, which, uh, which is definitely a change. But on the other hand, if you are pushing your images, then you, that's probably within your power as, to do as well. Um, but that's that's kind of there's a, a discussion that's still open about that. Um, so that's only a provisional decision by for now. Um, and then the next bullet point is Git SSH proxy. Um, Stefan Ahida, do you want to explain that one? Yeah. So there are uh, first. Let's talk about custom MTLS. Um, so self-signed certificates. Uh, we have implemented self-signed certificates right now for the image uh, reflector controller, the one that you know goes to your registry and scans for tags uh, in the next release of, of this. So it's already merged. In the next release, you'll be able to configure, create a secret with your uh, cell sign cert, with your CA and everything else. And um, you can use self-hosted um, image uh, registries with cell science certificates, but that's not the case for Git. There are a lot of people, for some reason, they are running Git, Git servers with cell science certificates. And so this is not related to the image update feature parity, it's more related to the Flux 1 versus Flux 2 uh, parity. And we were, we've started Flux version two using GoGit as the way of interacting with, uh, with Git. GoGit doesn't allow you to inject, uh, to dynamically inject uh, certificates. Um, but since GoGit didn't work with Azure, we then uh, have a different way of interacting with Git using a different implementation Go, uh, called um, GoGit2, which uses the libgit2 C bindings. And the libgit2 library has support, has a hook where you can say, hey, here is my cert uh, validated. So um, now we have 
the option to actually implement it. We can implement it without forking or doing anything uh, crazy about it. And um, that's that's getting us closer to parity. Now, there are people that are using uh, Git over proxies with SSH. So let's say if you use, if you, if you have a, a Git repo and you want to add it to your uh, cluster and that Git repo can be accessed over HTTPS, then you could add the proxy environment variables to the source controller pod. And it will use your proxy and it will clone that repository over, uh, over the proxy. But that doesn't work if you use SSH as a protocol. How that works in, in Flux1, why it works? Because uh, Flux1 shells out to the uh, Git um, binary and you can also mount in a, in a, a file with the Git config where you specify their uh, uh, tunneling proxying for, uh, for uh, SSH. And I don't have an answer right now. Uh, if GoGit doesn't support it, that's for sure. We need to investigate if libgit2 C bindings have such support. I look at it a bit at it and I couldn't find it. So there is a big chance we'll say no and we'll uh, we'll not have a solution for 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 those users. Um, but it needs to be investigated. So these are the, the two things left out in my opinion. Yeah, so the those the Git related ones are sort of arguable, uh, arguably holding back a, a V1 parity. Could we just use like a SoCat sidecar? I don't know. Or something similar in process. There's certainly an infrastructure solution to this that doesn't involve changing libraries. Yeah, if you can yeah, figure it, out a yeah. workaround, <laughs> that would be great. In the sense that all, all the Git binary is doing is is exacting an SSH process to tunnel, right? And, and then you still have the limitation that you're, you're applying that to all requests. So there's no possibility of, of saying proxy this Git repository is the top thing. Yeah, that's the problem because in a, in a Git configuration file, you can um, configure um, an exec method per host. So in our design, it would basically mean that you would be able to um, say that SOCAT should be executed for Git host A, but not for Git host B, which is not possible at the moment. I'm looking into the, the libgit issues and there are no custom callbacks for proxy commands or SSA configurations. Uh, based on an issue that has been open since 2018. Mm. Yeah, maybe we could do uh, like a Etsy host to like a socket activated thing <laughs> um, inside the source controller container. And then people can configure that. I think we need someone desperate enough to look for a solution outside the box to trick um, the connection into using a proxy, using yeah. a sidecar or whatever. Yeah, that, that would probably be a workable solution for folks and uh, could, could definitely. I mean, if you have like SSH tunneling enabled, which that would almost certainly have to be there because of a proxy, right? Like you would, you would need to be able to forward a port. So yeah, a sidecar at that point should work. Yeah. As long as you have SSH and SOCAT. Huh. It must be a, a Go implementation of SSH somewhere. Well, it, it, the standard library has, yeah. And um, that, that's the other thing is with the Go Git stuff we can just inject the uh, connection, right? We can't because the, the GoGet library, what it does is that it um, configures a Global. client 
for a protocol. So the, the protocol or the client for assets for the SSH protocol is shared by anything that uses it. So if I you see. do some custom okay. connection configuration, then it will be applied to everything that goes through it. So yeah. Um, so the library design is not modular enough for client injection. Per no, it assumes that that the thing that's running it um, only wants to configure things once. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So this probably would need to happen at the yeah at the infra layer outside of. You could use Go to bootstrap, you know, those connection modifications, but you need to intercept it at the kind of OS level instead. I don't know. That should be possible. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm going to work on that right now, but uh, maybe we should comment on the issue that that's a potential solution. <laughs> Yeah, definitely worth recording it. Yeah. What's the what's the issue number for this? Um, I'll find it's it. issue number hundred and thirty one in the source controller repository. One thirty one. I think there's another issue that's related. Ninety three, I think. Okay, I'll leave some comments about potentially solving this at the OS level. There, there was another question that I, I think I, I commented there also in the whole uh, verifying self sign search, which was support for mutual TLS, uh, which some, I don't really understand why people are doing this, but I guess added security. Uh, I haven't really looked into uh, freaking. That's issue 93. Yeah, I mean, I can certainly see another party kind of enforcing MTLS access to their Git repo because they have strong opinions and then some other party running in a Kubernetes cluster um, dealing with that misery. So yeah, I, um, I started looking into it, but then I ended up with the whole KC testing stuff and that took way more time than I wanted it to. Uh, yeah, that's gonna run into the same exact issues with the GoGet yeah. clients, global client. Because if you yeah, only yeah. want to do it for one host, then it's going to be okay. I'll keep that in so, mind. Yeah, but we, we would basically end up having to implement this in, in Libya 2 initially if you want to uh, implement it. And then you have to deal with the, the limitations of Libya 2 because Libya 2 is already in, like implemented as a option, uh, optional Git time uh, in source controller. That's true yeah. that we could just ask people to use LibGit and yeah. not worry about solving it in GoGit at all. Yeah, that, that's as long kind of as it's supported. Hmm. Yeah. That's kind of the idea that I had at least was basically, at least initially, so like, yeah, if you really need it, here you go. And you have to live with the, the limitations of, of shadow cloning. Um, yeah, I, uh, anyway, MTLS is out of the scope in terms of future parity. So yeah, not sure. try to implement it at the same time with self sign certs. Let's get self sign certs in there and you know, create a new issue for MTLS because it's a totally different use case. No one asked for that in, in Flux One. So. Yeah. Uh, the self sign search thing should be also solvable at the OS level by just injecting a bundle onto the file system. Yeah, but right. we want to use libgit 2 and do it uh, through a Kubernetes secret. Yeah. That's possible, so. So, so if someone, I, I can do this if I find the time, but if someone actually gets to it that, like before me, just comment in the issue. So that we're not looking at this at the same time. Just go like, yeah, I'll take it. And I'll do the same at the case. Okay. So for HTTPS access, we have the code that Michael wrote in the image reflector controller. I think that could be moved to source controller when it talks over HTTPS with, with Git repositories. So that's one thing. And another thing is implementing self sign for with libgit2 for the SSH protocol, right? So when we do this self sign thing, is that actually going to be indicated on some secret the Git repository and it's going to modify yeah. the reconciler? Okay. It's in the issue. Yeah, I, sorry, I haven't read it. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to understand yeah. that solution is different than modifying the pod infra. So that makes sense. 
So okay. now you create an HTTPS credential secret with username and password. If you add cert file, key file, and CA file to that particular secret, then we'll be switching to, uh, to our own handshake. If it's not there, then we assume, hey, that means you are using a, a well-known uh, certificate authority. Uh, but for SSH, it's, it's a total game, total different game. <laughs> I have no idea how to do it <laughs> with libgit2. For the SSH proxy thing, um, we, could, we could add a handler to the reconciler that looks for SSH keys in, as a connection secret and then sets up a tunnel, you know, temporarily for the reconcile. That's a, that's possible. It's just, you wouldn't you wouldn't be modifying the pod YAML at that point. You'd be writing Go to you know manage a life cycle of tunnels. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, okay, Could solve it the same way. Okay. Let's stop with this discussion because uh, yeah, it's definitely something that we need to investigate. What we can do right now is implementing uh, uh, sets for HTTPS and help move those people that are blocked uh, in V1. Is there a draft out there for the image automation migration guide or is the image automation documentation it for now? There is, um, let me find it for you. Thank you. And it really is a draft. It is <laughs> well signposted as a draft. From, from the build uh, numbers discussion, I have some ideas about some things we can add in there to make sure. And put it in the chat, Kingdon. Thank you. Are there any other discussion items or topics? I the big question is when we start the timer. If we start the timer after we implement HTTPS, only custom certs, or if we start the timer after we figure out SSH tunneling. I'm for starting the timer after we, we implement HTTPS certs because tunneling feels like a thing that's not easily achievable in a month or two. I think I agree. I don't think most people are using tunneling anyway. Yeah, I think um, self-signed certs uh, and the um, image automation migration guide would be the things stopping us. Cool. After all, it, it is like quite a soft um, timer in the sense that it is the timer for six months, <laughs> something happening in six months time. So it's not like any kind of hard change really. Uh, are there any thoughts from, I know um, Microsoft use Flux um, are there any thoughts from Jonathan or, or David on the timetable for Flux V1 deprecation? No, I think it makes sense and sounds good. Um, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record. I keep bringing up the multi tenancy proposal. I know, I know you, you all have a current method of running it, but I think if it's from our perspective, is this if it's going to change? It's kind of like or not change, but if it's going to, you know, kind of alter to where we're switching to the user group model, I think one thing that we want is um, like have that be switched over by the time that we start implementing things. Um, so ideally before that six month timer ends and preferably sooner. Um, but that's the, I think that's the biggest blocker in our end. I think other than that, everything makes sense. That's a really good point, actually. That it's not just a timer for Flux V1 being deprecated, it's also a sort of timer for Flux V2 being 
solidified, if you like. Um, so we should figure out, you know, what, what kind of timetable we have for uh, all the big decisions like that having been made. Uh, it doesn't have to coincide exactly with how Flux V1 goes, but it should be coordinated with that, I think. So as Jonathan says, you know, the, if people are going to switch over in that six month period that have some sort of confidence that big things aren't going to change too much, especially what towards the latter bit of the six month period. Are there any other big things that you know of? Um, are, are, and if so, are they on any kind of list in terms of decisions? Good question. I don't know of any, apart from the multi-tenant thing. Um, and, and sort of some, some things around that, like, you know, how, how does that apply to image automation? But, Stefan? Yeah, in my mind is the fact that we are still uh, with the image automation in the alpha stage of its API. So mm -hmm. after, after we make a release with the custom TLS, I think we should focus on getting the, all the image updates APIs into beta and have a stable release like Helm releases and everything else we have in the API. So to signal people and move the controllers from the extra components to components. And so that Flux install and Flux bootstrap, if you don't, pick and choose anything, you just install it, gives you the same thing that uh, Flux V1 install gives you today. Um, so in a way, stabili stabilizing the API, that means after we move to V1, uh, beta one, we have any kind of change has to go through a webhook and we have to ensure that uh, any change is backwards compatible. We no longer delete fields uh, we deprecate them and we remove them in V1, beta 2, and so on. So you have to be more, you have to be more rigorous when it comes to API changes in the image automation. So we have like, let's say a couple of weeks to, to yeah, decide what other things are necessary in there as required fields, because optional fields, we can always add them. It's not a breaking change. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Not um, just on the road for feature parity as well, since we've deprecated the manifest generation thing, uh, having good community solutions and suggestions for how to do, to support those use cases properly uh, is coming. Uh, no structural changes to Flux, uh, Flux 2 as it stands to support those things. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, which things, Lee, were you talking about? Which um, just support? It's just helping people understand how to do manifest generation in CI instead of expecting that to happen at runtime ah. as a result of the controllers. So. Yeah. For example, how do you compile JSONnet into YAML before it reaches the cluster? Or if it reaches the cluster, you can use something like Tecton or any other you know, task-based system in Kubernetes to get those YAMLs out and then Flux will reconcile them. So it's more about a docs task, but it's a huge one because we, we, we definitely need to write down at least two examples. One with a SAS CI, let's say GitHub Actions, because it's so popular. And another one with only Kubernetes uh, something like Tecton and Minio for uh, for the final storage. I think lots of us are going to have to jump to uh, CNCF meeting, so we better. I think we better wind it up. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Michael. Um, should should I add that to to the action items list? Um, yeah, we have to create uh, two discussions, one for um, GitHub Actions and one for Tecton. I will do that next week after I talk more with Kingdon if he wants to take them on. Yeah. 
Okay, thanks. All right, well. Um, thanks, folks. Yeah, thanks everyone. And if, and if we miss any action items, please just update the, the list. Uh, and if, and if you, anyone wants to sign up for assignments for next week, just put your name on there and have fun. Um, see you next time. Bye. 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 Yes, everyone.